To all of our airborne rangers in the sky, thank you for your sacrifices that you've made so that we can go on living and enjoying our beautiful lives. We will not squander this opportunity. And I promise you, I and this group of men and women in the 75th will not squander the opportunity you have given us. Branches lead the way. Welcome to the Leading with Vulnerability podcast. You guys all know me. I'm your host, Yuma Barnett. And if you heard in that opening there, you probably heard a voice that you've heard on this podcast a couple times. And if uh, you guessed correctly, or if you saw it on YouTube, yeah, that's uh, Josh Jacobs. And those were some of the remarks from his retirement ceremony, which happened a couple of weeks ago. Josh and his wife, Sydney, are currently in Europe touring around on a much, uh, much deserved and well-deserved holiday after his, his retirement. And I know some of you saw his retirement ceremony or attended his retirement ceremony uh, in person or saw it on YouTube. Uh, but I wanted to condense the ceremony a little bit, just added uh, my remarks and Josh's remarks from the ceremony. And I think uh, sometimes we overlook these retirement ceremonies like this from the military, but uh, they're super important. I know Josh will hold on to the, this video and these comments you know, for years to come and you won't know the value or really appreciate you know, taking the time to do that retirement ceremony until, till years have passed. But, uh, luckily for him, he has a spouse that keeps him in line and made sure he didn't skate out of the service without, without doing a ceremony after 20, 20 plus years inside of the 75th, which is a pretty remarkable accomplishment. So without further ado, we'll get into the uh, comments from myself and Josh during his retirement ceremony. Hope you guys enjoy it are enjoying the podcast and uh, we'll check in with you guys again uh, next week. Thank you. Here we are again. It only feels like yesterday we were together for my retirement ceremony. Uh, Josh and I swash, um, discussed just swapping speeches and uh, going another, another iteration, but we thought that might be a bit tacky. So we're bringing original content. So hold on. A few things have changed since we last met. I'm on relaxed grooming standards. And even though I could have technically worn my uniform, I think we can all agree I look better with a beard, but that's enough about me. The man of the hour is Josh Jacobs. For the past week, I've been asking myself, who is Josh Jacobs? How do I describe Josh to someone who has never met him? How do I describe a husband, father, ranger, and friend with a personality as big as Josh? I started kicking around ideas in my head, doing word webs on scraps of paper. And the more I did this, the more the story resembled a movie and not a speech at a retirement ceremony. Josh Jacobs, the movie, the biopic. A film filled with laughter, shenanigans of the highest degree, some tearful moments, pulse pounding action, and a few cringeworthy moments. I laughed out loud at the concept and muttered to myself, I'd watch that. So today with all of you gathered here and online, you will hear the first treatment of Josh Jacobs' upcoming action, rom-com, drama, fantasy, action, adventure, motion event, motion picture event. And so we're all on the same page. A treatment is what comes before a script to see if there's actually something there worth writing your script for. This brings us back to our original question, who is Josh Jacobs? How do I describe Josh? Who plays Josh in the movie? Josh is a mix of characters, both real and fiction. He's a mix of Frank the Tank from old school mix of uh, Thorman Giants Bane from Game of Thrones, Bruce Willis from Die Hard, Yippie Kaye, John Daly, the professional golfer, Jesse, the body Ventura from Predator, I ain't got time to bleed, Coach Vince Lombardi, winners never quit and quitters never win, and a little Patrick Swayze adding some romance. No one like this exists, so I guess Josh will have to play himself. You wear many hats when you've been a ranger for over 20 years, husband, father, ranger buddy, and friend. And to make a quality movie, we need to know our lead character very well. Lucky for you, I have known Josh since the first day he walked through the double doors of 1276 West into the hallway of Alpha Company, First Ranger Battalion. Josh the Ranger. Unlike some people, I knew I liked Josh immediately. Josh is an acquired taste for some, not me. I wanted him in my squad immediately. Josh had a rough, 
blue collar feel about him. Someone I connected with because of my own upbringing. I also knew he wouldn't be joining first squad. A new ranger of his size and stature was destined for weapon squad. I watched Josh grow as a young ranger through many deployments and training exercises, and I could tell early he was gonna go far in this organization. And I was fortunate enough to be there watching him the whole time. Josh was a great ranger private, team leader, and squad leader. And as the years passed, we found ourselves in different platoons as weapon squad leaders at the same time. One story that stands out from those early years, Josh and I were weapon squad leaders in Alpha Company, first and third platoons respectively. Early in the training cycle, we knew that our squads were gonna share a machine gun range together. Josh and I went to the XO and requested an unreasonable amount of ammunition, expecting we would only get half of our request. A few months passed and range day was upon us. Our squads convoyed out to the range and waited for our ammunition to arrive. A, a semi-truck with a flatbed loaded with ammo arrived. We had assumed that was the company's allotment of ammo for the whole week. Our squads made their way, to over, made their way over to get their allotment of ammo, but the driver unhooked the trailer and drove away. We immediately called the company XO and told them the truck driver just left with the rest of the company's ammo and left it at the machine gun range. The XO said, no, you guys got everything you asked for. I've never seen so much Mark 19, 50 cal, and 240 ammo in my life, and our, and our squads shot every last round of that ammunition. We started at 1400, and the last Mark 19 was fired at 11 o'clock the next morning. It was one heck of a first range day for a ranger named Ethan Carpenter. Rest in peace, Ethan. <clears throat> Josh continued his journey as a platoon, platoon sergeant in Bravo Company. When Josh was a platoon sergeant, we, we both deployed together to Fab Sharana, Afghanistan. I was filling the operations role, and I was fortunate to watch Josh and the Rangers of 2B take the fight to the enemy on an almost nightly basis. <laughs> 2B was a special platoon. I called him Sergeant First Class Jacobs Island of Misfit Toys. He had a bunch of Rangers nobody else wanted and a lot of second chancers. But Josh, channeling inner Vince Lombardi, turned them into a lethal, cohesive fighting force. It was a pleasure to watch Josh and his Rangers operate. After his successful years as platoon sergeant, he found his way to Fort Benning and developed the next generation of Rangers. He soon returned to 175 and became the company first sergeant of Alpha Company, something I always envied. And I guess it's the luck of the Polish or something, he also drew a team bath rotation. Josh, you have had a storybook Ranger career and I am proud to have played a small part in that story. Josh, the ranger buddy and friend. I'm only gonna share two stories about Josh because I could go on for hours on this subject. We'll pick our story up in the winter of 2005. Josh and I attended Jumpmaster School together at 2nd Ranger Battalion at Tacoma, Washington. We flew into Seattle on a Saturday and like most rangers do on work trips, we made the best use of our time in Seattle by visiting local museums and historical monuments. You would not believe how late some of those places stay open. It was getting late, we were hungry. Josh and I contributed to the local economy, purchased a few hot dogs from a street vendor, and while eating our hot dogs, we concluded we had time to visit one more place before adjourning for the even, evening. As luck would have it, we noticed a line of people waiting to enter a location that was selling beverages to quench our hot dog thirst. And this place also had some catchy tunes radiating from the front door. Naturally, Josh and I got in line. By patiently waiting for our entry, Josh and I noticed a very large mustard stain on my very white t-shirt. After making the stain worse by trying to wipe it off, both of us, Josh, being the quick-witted great friend that he is, suggested just turn the shirt inside out. And we'll carry on with our evening. Brilliant. There's no way an enormous mustard stain will show through a white t-shirt. We made entry, headed, I headed to the beverage counter, and Josh headed to the sound of the music. While waiting for service, I had a brief moment of clarity. I looked across the room, and there was Josh, a good 12 inches taller than everyone else, dancing as if his life depended on his performance. I began to scan the area and noticed that I was also a good 12 inches taller than everybody else in the room. And there were, everybody in there had stopped and was staring at me and Josh. 
because we are the only people not of Asian descent inside the establishment. I waved Josh over and made him aware of the situation. Josh slowly looked over the crowd, gave a head nod, looked at me, and asked if I'd got our drinks yet. And I quote, he was ready to shake a leg. He looked at a guy standing next to him, yelled something at him, and gave him one of those big Josh bear hugs that all of us have probably received at some point. And we danced for hours and made a lot of friends. Josh is a great ranger buddy. Josh a friend. A couple years ago, I found myself as head coach of my son's football team. Football is my favorite sport, and I played many backyard games, but never anything formal or organized. I needed an offensive coordinator. I asked the other dads, but found no help. I turned to the only person that I thought could at least help me get started. Without hesitation, Josh was all in. What kind of person jumps head first into volunteering to coach a team without his kids on it, in a community he doesn't live in, Well, I'll tell you, not many, but Josh did. And the reason Jackson here today, because I know that those kids will never forget the season, two Army Rangers for their football coach. Josh, you are a true, give the shirt off your back type of person. You are a great friend. Josh, the husband. The military has been a tough place to cultivate a marriage over the past 20 years. Many marriages fall casually to the constant training and combat deployments, and unfortunately, Josh has not escaped this end. As a friend, I could tell how heartbroken he was when his first marriage came to an end, but in true Josh fashion, he picked himself up, dusted off, and handled the situation with grace and learning that I've always respected. Josh, you never compromised your devotion to your kids and arrived on the other side a stronger person. What makes us stronger, or what doesn't kill us makes us stronger, and all things happen for a reason. In this case, the reason is Sydney. Sydney, you are perfect for Josh. You are just what he needs. You attempt to keep him in line and on task. And I, going forward, I wish you good luck, and Kate and I will pray for you. And I can't wait to meet all six kids Josh tells me you guys are going to have together. Josh, you are a great husband. Josh, the father. One night after the Jacobs clan was over at our house, Kate and I were sitting in our living room and Kate said out of the blue, Josh is such a good dad. He's just a good dad. And I like watching him be a dad. Truer words have never been spoken. Josh is a great dad. Partially because he's a giant man child himself. When Josh is talking about or with his kids, his eyes light up. Jenna, Jack, Regan, Theo, I promise you, you do not know how lucky you are to have a father like Josh. Josh, I admire you as a father, and from one dad to another, you are doing a fantastic job. So that's it. That's the first treatment of Josh Jacobs' biopic. I have hours and hours and hours of content like this. Would you pay to watch this movie? Of course you would. Josh, I love you like a brother because you are my brother. I hope you find all the success and happiness you so richly deserve in your post-Ranger life. Rangers lead the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Master Sergeant Joshua Jacobs. getting old when you have to put on your glasses to read. <clears throat> so I'm going through a lot of emotions, uh, obviously more than I thought. I uh, experienced some of that with Yuma's ceremony, and now, now I'm getting to go through it on my own here. So uh, bear with me as I go through this speech. Uh, obviously, I'm... Uh, needing the glasses, tighter uniform, spending more time at college than I am uh, at work these days, clearing out of the Army. So this is a whole new uh, new process, new world. Uh, just glad to be able to uh, take this day and spend it with you guys here as the uh, final goodbye. 
Here we are 20 years from the day I shipped out to boot camp. Almost anyway, February 2002. I can't believe it's, it's come to a final end at this point. The career has been an absolute blur. Going by at the speed of light. Hanging up this uniform and donning a suit for the next chapter of life is going to be a rude awakening. This career has been extremely rewarding. I've learned much from colleagues, friends, family, and fellow rangers. These experiences will help me through that next portion of life as I continue into the afterlife, time after service. I thank everyone for being here today again. Uh, this retirement ceremony means a lot to me and my family, and, and I appreciate each and every one of you that showed up um, that I've had the privilege of serving with and uh, being a part of uh, being a part of a team with. This is uh, it's just an incredible, incredible experience for me. Let's get on with it, shall we? I'm going to start with a bunch of thank yous. Uh, I summarized the speech. Uh, went a little long-winded the last time we did one of these, so we'll, uh, we'll short it up. Uh, Partly out of appreciation for the uh, the men and women that are standing here at the ceremony, and came to uh, honor me on this last day, and uh, and I greatly appreciate that. I'll start with my beautiful wife, Sydney. Baby, you're my rock, my light, my inspiration in my life. You lift me up when I'm down. You guide me, guide me through this life. Help me to make decisions. Provide me with hope, patience, grace. And, uh, and a purpose and direction. You bring, you bring me the greatest happiness a man, husband, and ranger could ever, ever possibly ask for. You challenge me on a daily basis to seek new adventures and take on new challenges. And you put me back on azimuth when I get off course. You heal my wounds and provide me comfort when I'm afraid. You show great patience, compassion, and understanding when dealing with my shenanigans and laissez-faire attitude. You've guided the families of the 75th Ranger Regiment through volunteer service, and now as an FRSA. As I watch you from afar in my new position as stay-at-home dad, I can't call it Mr. Mom because I don't do the word mom any justice. So be forever known as stay-at-home dad. I watch you as you provide our family and the regiment with great patience, love, support, and commitment. You are determined to do what is best for the family and the community. You seek out to find imperfections and make them perfect, which you've done with me. Every day, I am honored and humbled to be your partner, your teammate, your friend, and your husband. You are the greatest wife a man could possibly ask for. I can't wait to stand by your side day by day through the rest of the next chapter of our lives together. I love and respect you and will never let you go. You're stuck with me, baby. I love you. To so those beautiful children who I adore, Jenna Faye, you are a strong, beautiful, confident young lady, and probably a little embarrassed right now. You're an incredible athlete, student, sister, and daughter. You watch over the flock when mom's away and take care of your crew of misfit brothers. You keep them all in line I love and admire your passion for adventure and look forward to our adventures together, much like the dirt biking ones and uh, the most recent one that you brought up for your birthday, skydiving, maybe doing a little base jumping, swimming with some sharks, uh, taming tigers, arm wrestling grizzly bears, and the other adventures that you've brought up to me that uh, you want to accomplish before you pass on or I pass on in this life. You challenge me to be better every day, and I appreciate you for it. I stood by and watched you as your confidence and courage has grown. From playing basketball, softball, throwing shot put and discus, to watching National Geographic specials on killer whales and great white sharks. 
You impress me daily with your passion to learn and grow. You are my firstborn, and you will be charged with leaving this family long after Sydney and I are gone. I love you, and you are amazing. Jackie boy, you're a brilliant scholar, athlete, brother, and son. I am blessed to have such an incredible young man with such great passion for discovery and adventure. You spurred your sister's adventurous spirit when you first talked to me about buying a dirt bike several years ago for your birthday. You showed us all that if you face your fears and the unknown, you can unlock a much untapped potential and truly live your life. Now, years later, I watch as you race around, chasing your sister around the yard and teaching your brother the ways of off-road vehicles. You're truly a chip off the old block with your dad's quick wit and calm demeanor. As I told Jackson during Yuma's retirement ceremony, Yuma and I have spent many weekends schooling you boys in the ways of athletic sport. Obviously, you have yet to defeat us on the field of battle, but I, I do fear that one day far, 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 far away, that time may come and the old men may lose. But until then, I can't, can't wait to see where your passion for geography, archaeology, software development, and multimedia take you. You're an amazing older brother who puts, together, puts great time and effort into loving and nurturing your siblings, siblings, and I appreciate that. It was truly a gift when I welcomed you into this world, my son. I love you, buddy. Reagan Joseph Pusky Jacobs, a.k.a. Pusky. I can only explain it much in the same way I explained Maverick on Yuma's retirement day. Have you ever seen the Geico commercial with the animal in the attic, banging on the drums, sliding down the railing? That's, that's Reagan. He is, uh, he is a terrorist at times, and rightfully so. <clears throat> you keep me young and vibrant in life, challenging me daily with sword fights, fist fights, wrestling matches. Saving the world through Paw Patrol, Marvel comic superhero play. You aspire to be a superhero yourself and fight the bad guys like your dad did when you grow up. I can only hope that you maintain some semblance of imagination and creativity, you current, uh, some semblance of the imagination and creativity you currently possess throughout the rest of your life. You inspire me daily to go further, faster, and do more and make me a better version of myself, along with your other siblings. I can't wait to watch you grow and develop into the crime-fighting sleuth, just like Scooby-Doo and the gang, always solving the mystery and getting the bad guy. All right, here's your cue. All right, aside from Jack being a Titans fan and Jenna being bandwagon. Pooski is my last remaining Packer diehard fan. Isn't that right, Pooski? Go Pack Go. That's right. You're going to sit there this year with me on the couch. We're going to watch the full season of the Packers with no deployments, no training cycles, and no missed opportunities. We're going to watch those Packers bring home another Lombardi trophy to old Lambeau Field, where it belongs. <laughs> Theodore Edward Jacobs, a.k.a. Fat Tot, a.k.a. Babyface Moretti. You're the new kid on the block with a lot to live up to. You still have a long way to go from your hum humble beginnings of pooping and puking yourself while traveling around in mom's arms as a real-life bobblehead doll. But I'm positive you'll overcome your current constraints through developmental counseling from your brothers and sisters, or sister. Maybe sisters, we'll see. I look forward to watching you grow and develop into the wonderful young man. I love you, buddy. To Sydney's family, Becky, Wade, Joseph, Rick, Papa, and Andrew, thank you all for your love and support as we continue to work, develop, build, and grow our family. Along with my children, Sydney is the single greatest gift ever to be bestowed upon me, and I appreciate that. 
Thank you for sharing her with me. I love all of you. To my brothers, Joe, Jason, and Jeremy, thank you for providing me with a competitive, challenging environment as we grew up. You set the tone for success and uncovered my competitive spirit in the early years of our basketball games, barefoot on the gravel driveway at the old farmhouse, playing the arch rivals basketball, dishing out the punishments. I was receiving, of course. <clears throat> You provided me with wall-to-wall -wall counseling when necessary, helping me to evaluate my faults and weaknesses and allowing me to turn them into strengths. You guys set me up for success. You delivered to me grit, guts, and intestinal fortitude, and I appreciate you and love you for it. So the four horsemen, my four best friends growing up as a kid, Jonah Joel and Rob Kestel, we ran the mean streets of Roosburg, Wisconsin learning many lessons along the way, like mailbox bowling is illegal. Lake Michigan will give you an ice cream headache in mid-July if you dive into it. It's that cold. Taking a skateboard down the largest hill next to Jonah's house for the first time riding a skateboard. It's a poor, poor decision. Uh, riding three-wheeled vehicles while uh, consuming a couple of uh, beers we may have acquired through uh, other means. Poor decision as well. But in all those poor decisions were, were many, many lessons learned and great times. I thank you for sharing Dan and Juanita with me. And uh, if Justin was here today, I'd tell him the same with Tony and Gail Zale. Um, we required three sets of parents to help get us through uh, and alive in one piece through our youth. And, uh, and I appreciate uh, love and respect each and every one of them. To my mom and poppy, mom, I told you uh, 20 years ago that it was going to be four years and I'd be back home before you knew it. Those four years have finally come. <laughs> uh, I stand here today to gladly announce that it's finally over. But I think we both knew from the beginning that this was going to be a long journey. You've always been the patriarch of our family, taking care of the crew, ensuring bed, clothes, roof over our head, and everyone was prepared for the battles to come and to face the world ahead of us. I love and respect you more than you could ever imagine. You've been my strength and my rock until you pass that honor on to Sydney. You've been my idol my entire life, inspiring me daily as I watched you and learned through your coaching, counseling, and mentorship as a mother. You are by far, you and dad are the most influential people in my life and have always been my idol since day one. I love you both dearly. And I know the old man's looking down on us, proud of what every one of us have become. Poppy's been a phenomenal addition to this family. I, I appreciate every bit of you and putting up with the chaos that is us. You've been a quiet voice of reason in the backdrop, always bringing a different refreshing perspective to the conversations around the family and providing us with new experiences. Thank you for your love and support. Our family couldn't do this without you. To the nieces and nephews, there are too many to name at this point, so I'm not going to try fear of missing one. You guys have allowed me to learn how to be a parent through watching you grow, getting my hands dirty practicing, child rearing through assisting my brothers. You challenged me and the way I look at the world. You are each unique and gifted in your own way, and it's been my pleasure to be a part of your life, lives. Finally, to the Rangers of the Regiment, I'll keep this brief. We're not going to go name by name. There's just way too many people to point out and talk about. Way, way too much time over the last 20 years. The Army, as we know, it's going through a serious period of social change. Everything from uh, 
coming out of our deployment cycles and heading into consistent training cycles and preparation for the unknown. We were a much kinder, more intelligent, better fed, better equipped, and better trained Army than when I first joined. We're now embracing same-sex partnerships and truly setting up organizations for equal opportunity for all. It's a tough challenge and a big change, but it's necessary to keep things in perspective and keep us moving forward as a nation. The Army's always been a test bed for, for new ideas and, and uh, ground, groundbreaking place for, for new concepts and progression throughout society. Change is never a bad thing. As leaders and followers, we must embrace this change and move forward with it. It will only make us a better regiment and a better army for future generations. Do not be short-sighted, think long range, 10 to 20 years from now, and how what we're doing today will affect the army and the regiment as you go about your daily tasks. Advance yourself. I cannot stress enough to every one of you, you must come out of this army enlistment with a college degree. You and I have talked many, many times about how we've wasted tens of thousands of dollars not taking our educational benefits seriously up front and later having to cram it at the back ends of our careers. Use it or lose it. Continue to try and find times where you can take those classes and have experiences outside the military. Those experiences will make you a better leader, a better mentor, and a better friend. The Army's also always downsizing, so in this new, uh, new, more training-focused environment with less deployments. So at any point, you have to be ready to either separate from the Army or be separated. You never know what that next day is going to bring, so get that education now. Utilize those benefits and prepare yourself for the unknown. But before you take, take on your college endeavors, first think seriously about what you really want to do in your post-military careers. It's been a big process over the last few years as we mapped out um, what retirement's going to look like and the numbers, where we want to be at, how much money we want to make, what area we want to live in, how we're going to break that down, what, what college education path, line do, path do we need to get onto to be successful at the end of that career and be in a place where we want to be. And we're accomplishing that mission now. And we're going to continue to do that over the next two to three years. Have a plan and execute it flawlessly. Set your goals for yourself and execute them to perfection. Zig Ziglar once said that if you aim for nothing, you'll hit it every time. So aim for something, have a focus, and set your goals. Dream big. There's only one person standing between you and your accomplishments and your goals in this life, and that person is you. Once you allow yourself the ability to understand that you are the only person that stands in your own way, you will unlock the ability to accomplish anything that you choose to do in this life. So get out of your own way and go forward and accomplish your mission, whatever it, you choose it to be. No, remember this, no one goes through this life alone. It's all about the network of friends, family, and colleagues that support you through the journey. Many of those I've talked about here in family, and I will continue to talk about the Rangers as we go through this speech. I am forever indebted to this organization and to the men and women that serve in it. To the Rangers, both past, present, and future, the names are too vast to speak, so I won't even attempt it, as I said in the beginning. Rangers, the young Rangers, is the lifeblood of this organization. They make our jobs as leaders easier. Your daily successes drive the growth and development of senior leaders, much like the commander here, that will go on to lead our formation, the Army formations in this country in the future. Your actions and the way you execute those actions on a daily basis is what prepares them and trains them for that next career and that next step. 
to the NCOs, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this phenomenal fraternity of men. Hold the regiment and, and the nation accountable at all times. I always speak up when there's a question on an action or an order. Provide brutal, unfiltered feedback to your officers and leaders. To the officers, thank you for your mentorship, leadership, guidance, development. It's been a true honor to serve with each and every one of you. To the civilians that work here in the 75th Ranger Regiment, what you guys do on a daily basis to support this organization is incredible, and I appreciate each and every one of you and what you've accomplished for this organization. For the uh, wives of all these service members, I've got so much respect for each and every one of you. The dedication, commitment, and sacrifice that you make is beyond anything we do. Special shout out here to Yuma Barnett as he uh, spoke today at the ceremony. I really appreciate that. They say the copying is the greatest form of flattery and I stole most of my content throughout the years from Yuma Barnett. So anyone that's come up underneath me can thank him for that. You know, back in the day, walking the halls of Alpha Company 175, I never in a million years thought I was going to come back as the Alpha Company First Sergeant. And then that my commander, old Bob Wilson, would be the uh, probably the oldest guy in the battalion, but also uh, a private from Alpha Company 175. And we would be back there as commander and first sergeant together. Backstory on Bob, he was a non-commissioned officer. Then he decided to go to flight school, become a pilot. And then he decided after they decommissioned the Kiowa that he would then become a commissioned officer, probably based on that experience and well-roundedness is the best officer I ever served with. <laughs> Amazing human being. To all of our airborne rangers in the sky, thank you for your sacrifices that you've made so that we can go on living and enjoying our beautiful lives. We will not squander this opportunity. And I promise you, I and this group of men and women in the 75th will not squander the opportunity you have given us. Branches lead the way. <laughs>